Christian. Hey everyone, Dave here, and with the news arising that Christian Bale is attached to the latest and most Sorkin-y of Steve Jobs' biopics, I found myself revisiting the first biopic released after the legendary computer man's death. Oh no, not that one. I'm talking about the one that takes itself the least seriously and yet is the most honest. Not honest about the details of the man's life, but honest about itself to be sure. Today, I'm geeking out over iSteve. Dave's Obsession! Dave's Obsession of the Moment! Famously written in only three days using minimal Wikipedia research and shot in another five days, iSteve was the first feature film from comedy video website Funny or Die, and despite being a parody, it proudly boasts its first Steve Jobs movie status as its primary selling point. Now, just to be clear, I personally am not a Steve Jobs worshipper or a Steve Jobs hater. Yes, I'm editing this video on Final Cut Pro 7 on a MacBook Pro, but I made this in MS Paint and I'm way prouder of that. Steve Jobs was a hugely influential person, for better or for worse, and I think he certainly deserves at least some of the credit he gets, if not necessarily all of it. But as we'll see in a moment, Steve Jobs is ostensibly the subject of this movie, but he's not really the target of the joke. The cult around him is a bit of a target, but the primary target is the biopic genre itself. Let's go through the Oscar bait biopic checklist! The self-importance... After all, you know what Socrates said about an unexamined life. The public figure's secret dark side and internal torment. The forbidden or lost love. The melodramatic overacting and weight put on mundane events. Just a lamp, I know. But it got me to thinking. Hmm. Imagine a movie made entirely by computers. The origins of iconography and slogans we associate with the person. These will make you think different. How everybody else they meet either doesn't understand them or sees great things in them. Turning historical figures into over-the-top cartoon villains. Eras faked through broad caricatures. We'll hear more about the real movie Argo when we return. Shoehorned in biblical motifs. Last night I had a good one. Dreamt about the Garden of Eden. Hmm. Yeah, it was the most beautiful trees and bushes I had ever seen. Events claimed to have importance without demonstrations or explanations about why they're important. I know that you made this computer, and this computer changes everything. Yep, they're all here, all in their least subtle and most delightful naked glory. And all the story beats are here, the early spark, the rise, the pride, the fall, the rebirth, all here, sometimes intentionally without any sort of motivation or progression from point A to point B. Oh, Steve, are you back now? Yes, Susan, I am. Oh. Also, this movie uses midichlorians as a plot point way better than the prequels did. I am not making that up. Let's top it off with awkwardly blocked scenes and very well-known details intentionally portrayed incorrectly. Some of them little forgivable things, like a slightly different word choice from reality. Hello, I'm an Apple. And I'm a Microsoft. And some of them major mistakes that even someone who did absolutely no research would catch. We even opened stores of our own to meet the demand. You might have been to one, they're called Best Buys. Oh, some of them have their basic most roots in historical fact. You know how in real life Steve Jobs hired John Scully away from Pepsi, and they had a good partnership for a few years, but tensions were rising, and one thing led to another, and Jobs was booted from the company? Here it's part of an evil plot by Commodore, yes, that Commodore, to sabotage Apple, preying on Steve's weakness for sugary soda. Scully's a mole who never actually worked at Pepsi, is hired and immediately fires Steve to fulfill the cartoon villain plot. And it all goes down in about 24 hours. In essence, this film is trying just hard enough to make it look like it's trying way too hard at the same time as not trying at all. And I think it works. The film has a great comedic ensemble. Justin Long is, very appropriately, cast as Steve Jobs, and his performance is almost absurdly earnest. Whether he's playing the kind, lonely, misunderstood genius, or the angry, world-conquering misunderstood genius. And he yells at a fake Justin Long, which is awesome. I don't think anyone here wants to get a Jamba Juice with Justin. Raise your hand if you want to get a Jamba Juice with the bee pollen and all the fixins with this little smarmy piece of shit. Sadly, Bill Gates is not played by John Hodgman. But fortunately, he is played by Dr. Venture himself, the always fantastic James Urbaniak, who brings a sniveling worminess to Bill Gates that highlights the stereotype of the Apple-Microsoft rivalry, 
the slick, hip rebel versus the dorky imperialist. Michaela Watkins plays Melinda in the middle of a love triangle with the two tech titans, the cliché underwritten girl next door with hints of the cliché underwritten femme fatale. And Jorge Garcia is absolutely hilarious as a ridiculously pathetic and clingy Steve Wozniak. On one level parodying the public's dismissiveness towards the real Wozniak in the face of jobs worship, but on a simpler level, just good old-fashioned butt-monkeying. Hey, can I go sit over there now? You thought Justin was being earnest? This movie convinced me that if I ever meet Jorge Garcia, I need to give him a hug. There's also a handful of cameos comedy nerds might recognize, such as Paul Rust and John Ross Bowie. But despite the comedic pedigree, the film is not quite a gag -a minute Zucker Brothers style spoof. In some scenes, the only joke is the constantly ignored presence of Wozniak. In other scenes, there's no actual jokes at all, it's played completely straight but with the subtlety removed, letting the ridiculousness speak for itself. Now, it's possible that you're thinking, uh, Dave, I already have a biopic parody. It's called Walk Hard, and it actually is a gag -a minute Zucker Brothers style spoof. Justin Long even has a cameo in it. And Funny or Die themselves released that fake trailer for Weird, the Al Yankovic story. Between the two of those, hasn't every joke about the biopic formula already been made? Well, almost. As much as I enjoy watching I, Steve, the film itself isn't the brilliant part. The story behind the film is the brilliant part. I, Steve might not be the funniest biopic parody, but the process that begat it is without a doubt the best biopic satire. I might even go so far as to call it performance art, if I wanted to make it sound important yet inaccessible. But I'd rather make it sound accessible, so let me break it down. It wasn't long after the death of Steve Jobs that production began on the Ashton Kutcher biopic. And I don't want to defame anyone involved in the production of the film, I'm sure there were some noble intentions in there, but it kind of felt like the vultures swooping in for the fresh meat. Let's cash in now before he's been dead long enough for people to not care about him again. I know that's a cynical way of looking at it, and I would love to be wrong about their motivations, but let's face it, it's really hard to see the movie Jobs as anything other than a cash-in on the man's death. And in rushing to make their movie first, with deliberate disregard for making their movie best, Funny or Die managed to shine a light on the crass commercialization of the memory of influential people. This film may not be crammed with jokes, but the entire film is a joke. An expertly crafted joke at the expense of the makers of jobs. Get the details wrong, anachronistic props, underdeveloped screenplay, who cares? People will see it because it's about a dead guy they're required to love, and because we got to it first. But you didn't get to it first, Jobs. Funny or Die sniped it away from you. Oh, you might have the first legitimate movie about Steve Jobs, but if the critics are to be believed, even that's questionable. At the very least, I, Steve is a masterful work of trolling, as evident from the TV spot where they take pride in the negative reviews the movie received from tech publications who take Steve Jobs very seriously. They trolled Apple fanboys, they trolled Hollywood, and if you make it to the end of the credits, they flat out admit that they trolled you. This is a work of complete fabrication and fiction being passed off as the story of a man's life. In other words, it's a biopic. They finish with their final word on the oversaturation of Steve Jobs' worship by saying that there's a less profitable, perhaps, but more interesting movie to be made in the story of the Commodore Company. And they admit that they're not the ones to make it. I, Steve is available on DVD, and unfortunately there's not really any bonus features. I would love some behind-the-scenes material, even fake behind-the-scenes material, treating it like a real biopic, but given the rush production, the lack is understandable. The description on the back of the box is a fun read, though, you should check that out. As of this recording, I, Steve is also on Netflix Instant, so you can have a double feature of I, Steve and Jobs and decide for yourself which film is more sincere. If you actually do that, get back to me with your findings. And until next time, this is Dave, signing off.